Hello, students. Hi, welcome to another class of Form 5. Okay, it's a good uh, Saturday evening. Okay, afternoon or rather late afternoon. Okay, I hope you're enjoying your Saturday. Okay, uh, first of all, I hope you are able to hear me. Uh, today, I'm going to start Chapter 9. Okay, so uh, I don't think I'm going too fast actually, yeah, uh, because uh, later on, there'll be a lot of topics that needs uh, require a lot of time right, for to explain, okay, because some of the things are new to you, for example, like genetics and so on. So let's uh, have a look at the comments. Uh, can I see? Okay, Ke Yi, hello, good evening. Okay, hi, nice to see you here. Min Min, uh, Min Yin, okay, good evening. You can hear me, I hope. Huh? Yeah, I think my mic is not off all right okay so i will start uh, straight away so today chapter nine is actually part of uh, we're talking we already finished first of all in the form five we talk about the plant okay we talk about the anatomy and all the processes and the plant so we're now we're moving on to a bigger picture last uh, chapter that is on chapter eight we already started with the uh, role of microorganism in the ecosystem in our environment so now we're also looking at the environment so chapter nine is on ecosystem okay all right okay so let's look at i will share screen i huh? hope you can see this okay so ecosystem now what is the meaning of ecosystem okay uh, i'm sure you heard of it before right you heard of it since form one or form two when you did your uh, science so ecosystem is a very big uh, encompass a lot of things these are including the uh, plants, the animals, and also the non-living component in our on our earth. That means the, including the sunlight, the water, and everything. So everything that you see on the earth here is actually an ecosystem. So on our earth here, um, ecosystem is part of the whole thing, lah, right? Okay. Now we look at the entire picture, right? Let's let's start with this, huh? Let me just share, right? Okay, share already. Okay, so I'm going to proceed with ecosystem. Right, what is the meaning of the ecosystem? Now, first of all, you're going to see a lot of these terms, okay? According to your textbook, you will see this species, population, then community and ecosystem. So it's like a hierarchy, okay? If you zoom down on that one single individual, just one organism, okay, we're talking about the species. Of course, the species just do not live alone. They live together with other organisms, okay? I mean, other animals, in that system, in that place, so we call it a population and so on and so on. Okay, so before we delve into ecosystem, all right, uh, let's look at the definition first. So if you look at the word ecosystem, uh, it is a community. Community is a group, a group of uh, living things, right, of uh, including living things and also interacting with the non-living environment. What do you mean by non-living environment? So in our environment, not only exists uh, animals and plants, our environment also has got sunlight, it has got water, right? It has got the soil, it has got the uh, humidity. So all these are the non-living environment. We call it abiotic. So the living environment is called biotic component. Okay, sorry, yeah, I changed the color. So biotic component is actually the living things. Ah. Biotic component, including uh, bacteria, including plants, including animals, that's the biotic component. And then the non-biotic component are non-living. That's no, we call it abiotic. When you put an a in front of a word, it makes it uh, opposite. Okay, like for example, uh, normal. You call it. You put an a at the front here. Abnormal. So it's something that is not normal. So biotic uh, organism. That means the biotic component interacting with the abiotic component. That means. Uh, let's say the plant, all right, living there with the, what is the interaction with the sunlight? Of course, absorbing sunlight to make food, okay? So that is part of the ecosystem. Okay, now, all ecosystems are dynamic. Dynamic means it's not static. It's the opposite of static. Static means it doesn't change. It's always like that. For dynamic, it means it's ever-changing. That means it's not fixed, all right? When something happens, all right, maybe the environment changes, then the, this a uh, number of population will also change accordingly. So dynamic means it is not fixed. That is the meaning. Okay, they are continuously changing. Okay, so the interaction between the biotic and the abiotic components, there should be an uh, a dynamic equilibrium. Lah, okay, so whatever changes, this one will follow suit and change. Okay, so there has to be a, uh, uh, call it a balance. Okay, so when one of the components is disturbed, the whole ecosystem will be upset. So there has to be a balance, right? So let's look at uh, the going back to your understanding of form four first. 
Because before I go into all this hierarchy, eh, you will get confused when I talk about it. So let's talk about this one first. Remember when you talk about a multicellular organism, there is a hierarchy of organization, correct? Remember? So when you talk about one animal, animal, let's say multicellular, let's say you, right? Your body. Okay, good. Joanne, good evening. Yeah, okay, I can see a few more students here. So if you have, let's say, one body, right? You are a person. You are a multicellular organism. You are made up of millions of cells, okay? So let's talk about, we go right down to the basic one, all right? One cell, this is the basic unit of a living thing. So you have, of course, millions of cells. And of course, there are many types of cells in your body. Let's talk about one type only. Let's, talk, so let's say maybe your red blood cell, okay? So a cell is just one cell, okay? You cannot, this one cell, your red blood cell, is not going to perform all the function in your body. It is only, the job is to carry oxygen. Okay, so it is just one cell. Now, this is a cell. One cell is not enough to do the job. So you need many cells. So if you have a group of the same type of cell, you will call it a tissue. Okay, remember last time you learned this one? One cell, cell is what just one cell. If you have many cells of the same type grouped together, you call it a tissue. So Yang is a larger picture now, okay? So you're talking about cell, one cell, drop, uh, group together, you get a tissue. So we are also revising from forward. Huh? Okay. Then, your body does not only contain of one tissue. Let's say tissue A. Right? It, all the cells of cell A will make tissue A. Then you have another cell, another type of cell, cell B. Cell B, they group together, they will form tissue B. Okay? So different, different tissues. Let's say, look here, tissue A. You have tissue A, you have tissue B, you have tissue C and tissue D. Now, different types of tissue, right? The different types of tissue, they group together to form a functional organ. So the organ, let's say for the heart, the heart is supposed to pump blood. And then your heart has got uh, cardiac cells, cardiac tissue. Your heart, uh, your heart also has got the fat, all right? The fat stuck on the outer layer there, okay? It also has got... um. The, what they call the connective tissue, okay, which forms the, the vessels, the blood vessels and so on. So you have a higher level of organization. From cell, individual cell, you form tissue. And then one group of, uh, same, same, uh, one group is of cell. cell tissue, tissue A is formed of all the cells of A. Then you have one type of tissue. But there are many, many types of tissue. So all the types of tissue join together, you get an organ. So let's say organ X. Okay, organ X. And then your body doesn't have only one heart, isn't it? You also have got liver, you also has you have you have your kidney, you have so many different organs. So many, many different organs. Okay, let's say organ X, organ Y, organ Z will form a system. So a system, all right. What system? You have your um blood circulatory system, okay? You will have your digestive system. Uh, consisting of the stomach is one organ. You also have the uh, intestine is another organ. You also have your liver. You also have your pancreas. So different, different organs together, right, forms a system. So you have your digestive system. But your body does not only consist of one system. That digestive system is functioning just to digest your food. You also need to breathe, right? You need to take in oxygen. You also need your respiratory system. So different, different systems in your body right let's say system one is your digestive system so different different system here in your body will form your body lah, right so i sorry yeah i have just mm. so different different systems in your body will form wait where is the ah okay so i want to put a different color so you have your system one is your digestive system then you have your respiratory system you have your blood circulatory system you have your endocrine system, about 10 or 11 systems in your body. Then it forms your body. Okay, you are the organism. Uh, uh, the organism. So you can see here different levels, right? From something that is uh, lowest level, which is just one cell. Then you join up together, all right? You get a higher order, which is your body. So the same thing for your understanding about ecosystem also. Okay, same thing. I want to give you an idea. This is, uh, when you understand this, you can understand the next one. Okay, you have learned this, so I just want to revise a little bit. So now let's go on to organization of organisms in an ecosystem. In an ecosystem, you're not looking at cells. 
Okay, you're looking at your organism. So from this one, now nah, let's say this is an animal, all right, in the ecosystem. So now this is your body. Let's say this is not your body. Uh, let's talk about an uh, elephant, all right, an elephant. So the elephant lives in this uh, ecosystem, all right. Now, now we're talking about on a higher level. When you talk about ecosystem, you don't talk about cells anymore. You're talking about the organism as one. Okay. So now let's say this is an elephant, all right, an elephant now, all right. So one. One type of organism, we call it a species, okay? Species is very specific, okay? Uh, what is the definition? Okay, I'll, I'll look at it later. Huh? Now, species. One type of organism is considered a species. So you can have elephant, all right, staying there right, together with grass, together with whatever uh, plants or animals staying together at that place, all right? So one uh, is species. A species A. Now let's look at organism. Uh, the definition of species first. Why do scientists say uh, species A, species B? How do you define them as different species? So in terms of biology, okay, in terms of biology, uh, I think I can't remember. Maybe two lessons ago when you talk about the uh, species, yeah, or when you talk about the lineage, the classification, uh, the binomial system. What is actually a species? Okay. Why do we have different species? Now, species A is not the same as species B. So what uh what uh what what makes the scientists say this is a different species altogether? When I see this animal, this I call it species A. When I see another animal, I call it species B. Now, why are they different? So, what is the definition of being the same species? So, according to biology. A and B is considered the same species, okay, or X and Y, lah, okay, animal X, animal Y. They are considered the same species if they qualify these uh, conditions. Number one, they must be able to interbreed. That means they must be able to, uh, we call it a kawin, ah, kawin that means uh, the male and the female, they breed, right? They must be able to uh, produce offspring. When they breed, they breed, uh, they breed, they are able, not interbreed, just breed, uh, breed to produce offspring. They must be able to have a child or a baby. They can produce babies, okay? And then this baby has to have a sharat, has to have a condition. This offspring has to be fertile. Fertile meaning this offspring is able to produce another generation. Okay, it's able to produce another generation. So that means this offspring cannot be sterile. Sterile means uh, it's not able to produce the next generation. That's what it calls that. Uh, so it's not sterile. So if this it qualifies this condition, they can breed, they can marry, right? Uh, they can uh, have, uh, copulate. In, in animal, we, we don't say marry, like we say copulate. Uh, copulate means have children. That means they have sex. That's a basic meaning, a very crude meaning to say have sex, okay? So copulate right they're able to have the next generation and that next generation the baby or the offspring is not sterile okay that means it's able to have children then then we call this x and y is same species okay that is the definition in terms of biological aspect from the aspect of this biologist okay if they can uh, breed they can have the next generation of that they can uh, produce next generation the baby and it's not fertile, uh, sorry, it's not sterile, then it is considered this parent X and Y must be of the same species. So this is the same for human, right? Human, you can be of uh, your, your uh, let's say you're Chinese, right? And you talk about, uh, let's say, Caucasian or, you know, orang putih and all that, right? You may look different, right? You're, of course, your skin and all that features are different. You have different genetic composition. But you have many cases, of course, people can marry, intermarry, they have a different nationality, different citizenship, they marry, they can have children, and that children can have the next generation. So in other words, when we talk about human race, okay, there's only one species, which you know what's the name of the species? Yeah, can I just test what is the name of the human species? How much you remember from the previous class, uh, previous lessons, chapter? Can you give me the name of the human species? Okay, just type that. All right, I'll come back to you later. All right, just type the name of the human species. Okay, so that is the definition of species in terms of biology. So let's look at the definition here. Number nine, okay. A species, call it 种类, uh, is a group of closely related, 
okay, and capable of interbreeding, right? They are able to breed among themselves. That means X and Y, right? They marry and then they can have children. They have they are, the, the female can become pregnant, right? Will produce fertile. I see the word fertile. That means the next generation, all right, are able to produce further offspring. So example, all right, deer and so on and all that lah, all right, grass. So so what is the name here of the human species? I'm sure you can see from there. <laughs> yes, Homo sapiens, correct. Yes, Homo sapiens. So in terms of human race, uh, we are all Homo sapiens. Okay, not Homo sp, right? Homo sp means you have one same genus but different species. But you have Homo sapiens when you're specific with a species, that means all of them are the same species, okay? Just one type. There's no Homo something else. It's just Homo sapiens. So that is the meaning of species in terms of biological definition, okay? Now, I'll give you an example, an interesting example of something that is not same species, okay? I think I don't, I'm not sure whether I mentioned to you before or not. Huh? Now, you have cases where you have a uh, human intervention, uh, human have done this. Uh, you take a tiger, okay, and it cross with a lion. Ah, that's interesting, okay. Tiger and lion, okay. I cannot remember whether it's a male or female. Now, tiger and lion, they have done experiment before. They have uh, interbreed uh, tiger and lion before. What you get is called a tigon. <laughs> interesting, right? You take the name of tiger, you take the name of the lion, and then you get a tigon. Ah, it's a cross between a tiger and a lion. Now, this is very k -bad. Now, something is very interesting. You do not get in the textbook, right? I want to give you this information. So, tiger and lion, uh, lion, you can. Of course, you can mate them, right? Okay, animal instincts, uh, when they a male and a female, they get together, you know what they can do, lah, right? So, tiger and lion, you get tigon. Now, this tigon, it's born. Right now, this tigon is born, but interestingly enough, this tigon cannot interbreed with another tigon, right, to produce the next generation. That means this tigon is actually sterile. You are not able to have another generation of this uh, species called tigon. So, what is your conclusion from that? What is the conclusion from this uh, for this this situation? What conclusion that like, the scientists can make up from here? So if your next generation cannot inter uh, cannot have the next next generation, it means what? Okay, it means what? It means what? It means what? It means what we just mentioned earlier. We just mentioned earlier, this lion and tiger, they are not the same species. Yeah, and true enough, they are not. Okay. Tiger and lion, lion, they may be same family. They are the family of cats, but they do not uh, belong to the same genus. And then if they're not the same genus, they definitely cannot have to be the same species. So you tigon does not uh, have any more tigons. Now, another example is lion breed with tiger. That means maybe this is the male. Lah. Tiger is the male. Lion is the female. You get tigon. But they've also done experiments where you have li uh, lion is the male if i'm not mistaken i got to look it up uh, but don't don't take my word for it all right i want you to um go and search the internet is there for you right it's at your disposal in fact nowadays we can search for anything on this world okay as long as you have the inclination and your curiosity mind the mind of okay you can actually find anything you want so lion and tiger what is the difference here maybe this is the male and this is the female. So you take a male lion and interbreed with a female lion, a uh, tiger. What do you get? <laughs> Join the name together. Join the name together. Okay. So, uh, okay, nothing there. Nothing. Your, your, I have to sell out a bit uh, to see your comment uh, because I'm using one monitor. Okay, so lion and tiger, can you guess the name? Okay, I want to see, okay, let, let's let's make your imagination one while. Can I just have your name? The name of what you think. You how you name it, lion plus tiger, the name. What is the name of your uh, species? All right, let's see. Do I have any? Any? Not yet, huh? I don't have any. Homo sapiens, yes, correct. Homo sapiens, huh? that was a previous question. So now, what is the name of when you get lion and tiger, you join up the name and what kind of species are you think you can get? <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. Liger. Yes, you are right. 
you are very very imaginative and you happen to be yeah hitting the nail on the head right liger yes liger is a cross between lion and tiger and interestingly enough ligers when they interbreed right they have another liger liger they, this happen this liger happen to be sterile you cannot have another generation of liger this liger that is born right is happen to be not able to reproduce so what is your definition of that what is your conclusion from that lion and tiger must be of the different species yes that is what uh you know yeah really liger yes correct minion is really called liger okay you have liger you have tigon you can look it up you don't believe me or i don't expect to believe me all right you can take everything with a pinch of salt which is good right don't believe everything that you listen right don't believe everything that you 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 think people are okay you you, you can use it for your own judgment now go and look up liger go and look up tigon and see what you get okay so they are sterile so this from here is a definite definitive moment right they know okay they definitely must not be from the same species you cannot reproduce what you want for example you take elephant and you go and interbreed with a chicken <laughs> you want to make new species make organisms like that it's not going to work because they are very far your, your lion okay your, sorry your, your chicken is a different class okay they even split earlier chicken is a different class your elephant is a different class definitely they are very far apart you can see from the anatomy from the body shape and all that Okay, lion and tiger may be still considered quite close, right? Because they have the same family. But in terms of elephant, they are different order, right? different class. Class is even higher. Class, order, family. All right, remember your classification, class, order, family. If your class already different, definitely the morphology in terms of anatomy is very different. You see the chicken and the, the elephant. How is it possible to have the next generation? No, the genes do not match. The DNA do not match. You cannot have it. Okay, so in terms of species, genus, okay, uh, maybe the same, right? But the species are the species name different, that means they are different species. Okay, so that is your additional information, which I find is so interesting to find all this rather than just you know looking at the textbook, you know, everything is so 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 what so dead and so boring, right? This is interesting information. Of course, that requires a lot of time. That's why my lessons are my lessons always take up a lot of time because I give you a lot of information. Okay, now let's look back at this one. Huh? So we have seen what is the definition of species. Huh? Now, so we, we apply to here. We apply to here. Okay, now we're looking at this species A. All right, let's look at an elephant. Okay, in that ecosystem. Now, if you have one elephant, all right, okay, this is a species called elephant. Elephantus something, elephantus <laughs> something, like I can't remember. Okay, now, if you have many, many elephants of the same type, group together living together now this is called a population a uh, population of the, of the elephant uh? it's called population so you see elephant here elephant here all the elephants here right a few elephants six elephants all right living together in this this is called a population population is more of the number we're talking about the number okay population this is a population of elephants okay so that's what it means by population all right okay now, in that area that this elephant stay, it cannot be only ha having elephant, right? Elephant going to eat what? They must have his food. He must have the grass. He must have trees, whatever, lah, okay? He must have vegetation. He must have got plants. And, of course, there are other animals live together with the uh, elephant. So, let's say population A is the elephant here, okay? Elephant. They might, uh, there will be other animals, okay? Maybe uh, uh, you have whatever, and you have grass, okay? Population B, uh, grass is staying there. Then you have maybe rabbit, okay? Rabbit in the in the wild, la, not the homegrown rabbit, la, not the not the domesticated rabbit. La. Or let, let's put something different, la, not rabbit, uh, something like, I don't know. Let's put any organism that I can, now I can think of, think of any organism. Okay, never mind, just a population, another animal, all right? So they live together in the same place, right? Now, you call this a community, a community K, let's say. Community it consists of different populations. That means you have organism A, you have organism B, you have organism C, staying together. This is a community. So we're looking at larger picture now, isn't it? So first of all, it's just one animal, okay? You're talking about one. This is a, a species uh, of elephant. Then elephant, a few of them stay together. Same type, same type, uh, you get a population. 
population consists of the same uh, individual, uh, same type of individual. Then one population cannot exist on its own, okay? Because it has to eat other organisms. Let's say a lion, a lion have to eat the food. Now, what's the food? Maybe they eat rabbits, all right? They eat small little animals. So you have uh, population A together with population B, another organism, another species. And then uh, population C, you have diff three different stay together in that place. You call it a community, okay? So you get larger picture now. Now, then community K, all right? Let's say this community, all right? And you have another community living a little bit further off, a little bit uh, a different from a different habitat, all right? But still within the same kind of uh, ecosystem, all right? So you have community K, community L, community M, right? Different different communities staying together at one bigger area, or right? at one deepest, bigger space. We call it an ecosystem. An ecosystem has the same kind of climate, okay? So when you have this community K interacting with community L and also interaction between this one, this one, this one, and also interacting with the non-biotic component. For example, community M is plants. So plants need sunlight, isn't it? Sunlight to make food through photosynthesis. So this is an interaction, a complex interaction between uh, different organisms in that place. Also together with the environment, then you call it an ecosystem. Okay, an ecosystem is usually based at a certain area where you have a uh, consist a kind of climate. Okay, like an ecosystem in the tropical rainforest in Malaysia. Tropical rainforest. We have the ecosystem, the tropical rainforest ecosystem, where it's always hot and humid, and the the floor and you know, all the vegetation and all that is very wet. And right, we go into the forest, you can feel the dampness and all that. So that's the ecosystem of the rainforest. Then you go to ecosystem somewhere else. There are other ecosystems. For example, uh, ecosystem in the lake. Right? In the lake, you have all these animals laying, staying there, different, different animals. So there's another ecosystem. That's the ecosystem of the lake. Then you go to the ocean. Uh, there's another ecosystem. So now we're talking about different, different ecosystem. Uh, let's say tropical rainforest is ecosystem P. Okay, then you have desert. Uh, you have go to Sahara. Okay, Sahara desert in the uh, in uh, Africa. You have the ecosystem there because there are still animals that are able to stay there. Okay, you have the certain lizards and then the certain animals that are able to stay. Camels are in the desert. So there's another ecosystem, Q, right? Different environment, different uh, temperature, different climate. Then you have ocean. You go to ocean, you'll see fish and then the whale and then all different types of aquatic animal in the ocean. Then you go to another ecosystem. There you are, we have caves, right? Caves where you have bats. Bats staying inside the cave there and other insects and so on, scorpion and all that. So you see, you have different, different ecosystem on our earth here. Our earth is so big, so uh, so huge. And that con constitutes, uh, constitutes the biosphere. The biosphere is generally speaking just like our whole earth here. When you have different, different ecosystem, ecosystem in the in Malaysia is always a eh, rainforest, right? Then you have also desert somewhere else. Then you have the ocean, you have the cave. So these are different, different ecosystem. Okay, now that makes up your biosphere. Biosphere can be talked about as the whole environment, our whole globe, ah, the whole earth there. Okay, that is the biosphere. That is the sphere, the earth that consists of living things. That is called the biosphere. Okay, so I hope you see the whole picture. Okay, you see the whole picture, how an organism, you have also an order, right? How you, the, the, the classification. So one organism on its own is just one species, right? Then you have your population staying together, same organism, same type staying together, more than one. Then you get a population. Then you have different, different populations of different animals, different plants stay together. It's called a community. Okay, and after that, you have different communities stay together. You have a mix of an ecosystem and different, different ecosystems make up the biosphere. Okay, so let me see any, uh, any, nothing. Yeah, really like it. Yes, really like it. Okay, so I'll give you the definition first in terms of words. You understand, but you may not be able to uh, write. Huh? Okay, species, you can see uh, it's a closely related uh Organism, right? Interbreeding, they can interbreed, they can produce fertile offspring. So the keyword here is must be fertile. Okay. So humans are called same species because we are able to interbreed, even though different races, different ethnicity, and also different uh okay, a different characteristics. Uh, okay, our our DNA. I mean our genes, uh, composition. 
Now, population, okay? After species, you get one species, one organism. You stay together. It's the same species staying together. Uh, same species, so elephant A, elephant B, elephant C, okay? So you make up a population because they stay in the same habitat at the same time. So example, population of elephants are living in the jungle or population of a grasshopper living in a paddy field. So that's a population. When you talk about population, you are talking about numbers. How many numbers of the same type you have there? So let me ask you, if a, what's the population of a uh, student in our school? Uh, when you say a population of student in our school, you're talking about, oh, you're just counting the uh, student only. Uh, you don't count the teachers. You don't count the office workers. You don't count the canteen staff. You don't count the uh, workers who sweep the sweeper and all that. And all that. Okay, so when you talk about population, you're referring to the population of that specific type or specific group. So I ask you population or student, okay, maybe you have 1,000 over, okay? In our school, you have 1,000 over. So, so you may have uh, other, the smaller school will have just a few hundred. Lah. So you're just counting the population of that type only. That's called the population. Same type, same species. Now, what is community? Okay, we're done with this. Community consists of different population. Ah, so different population is like in our school. They talk about our school there. Okay, our school, you have what population? One of population is the student. Lah. The student is one population. Then what's in the school also? You have also teachers is another population, correct? Then you also have the office staff, people who work in the office there is another staff sokongan, all right? The people who work in the office there is another population. Then you have people who do all the cleaning the toilets, all right? Clean sweeping, the 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 uh, cutting the grass, all the gardeners, and all that, they are the uh, uh, par, okay? You call it pekerja uh, amrenda. So you have another population. So you have all these four groups of people, right, staying together in the school. Then you call it a community. So your school is a community, okay? Generally speaking, like, you, can, you can consider it as a community. So same species, okay, uh, for population, but community is different population, all right, including your animals and plants. So they are all living things. Huh? You're all talking about living things at the moment. You haven't talked about the un not living things yet. Huh? So community consists of different population of animals and plants staying at the same habitat. Huh? Okay? All right. Okay. Everything clear? Right. So next one, we go on to after community, what happens? You have different, different community. Okay, let's say this is our school, community A. Okay, then you have another school nearby. It's another community. Then you have another school nearby, all right? Now, then everything here, all these schools, different schools are in within the city. Okay, let's say within Ipoh, all right? Uh, something like that. So th that will be the a higher order. We call it ecosystem. Wait, uh, let me just take off this one. Okay, so next, ecosystem is a few different communities. So different communities. So now different area, yeah? community A, community K, L, M, and N. They live together in a habitat. They also interact with each other and also with the non-living. When you talk about ecosystem, you must be talking about the environment as well. That means you're going to talk about sunlight, water, soil, the pH, and so on. So these are the non-living components. Okay, water, air, soil, sunlight, humidity, and so on. So here you can see here, here, I added the word components when you talk about the ecosystem. So I put dot, dot, dot here to show there are many others, okay? These are not the other, just a few. You talk about uh, community, there's so many other things. Okay, later on we'll see what is the abiotic component. Okay, so, so far here, uh, I want you to understand uh, so what it means by that. So the ecosystem and then different, different ecosystem will form the biosphere. Yeah. Ecosystem, like I mentioned, the ocean is one ecosystem. Ocean, ecosystem or the rainforest is another one. So you will form the biosphere. Okay, it's a total, total portion of the planet which living things, uh, living beings inhabit. So it includes everything, biosphere. Okay, now let's go back to a little bit here. Now niche, you will see this word niche. Okay, what's the meaning of niche? Niche is referring to the job or the role of the organism or the species uh, or the organism, right? in that environment, in the place that it stays. What is the role? What is the job of the thing? For example, I'll give you an example. Eh? Let's say green plants. Green plants, you know, they play a very important role, right? What do they do? They produce food. Yeah, they are the producers. So the niche of that plant is they act as producers. They convert the sunlight into carbohydrate, into uh, starch, which the other animals can 
make use of, they can eat it, right, to get nutrients. So the role is what did they do? For example, another one, what is the role of decomposers? Uh, so the bacteria, what is the role of bacteria? Bacteria and the, uh, what they call that, the saprophytic uh, bacteria and also the Their role is to break down, break down all this dead organic matter, okay? Animals that have died, plants that have died. So that is decomposer. They, their role is at decomposing. So that is the job. That's what it means by decomposing, okay? So here, basically, uh, their role and all the activities that they do, okay? For example, the niche of aphids. Aphids are these little, little insects huh, that they can, they suck the sap cell from the, the, the flowing part, right? They will suck the sap. Firm, and this is their food, lah, right? And it causes the plant to wither and they die. So it's like something like a parasite. It is a parasite, okay? So the niche of the grass, yeah, the grass is to carry out photosynthesis. So it's very important. They are the producers, okay? They also uh, convert carbon dioxide into uh, com uh into uh, oxygen, right? They give oxygen to the environment. And then a uh, niche of grasshopper, okay? What do they do? They hop, they fly, they feed on the grass, and then become food for the insectivorous birds, birds that eat insects, ah. okay? So there are two types of niche, we call it niche. Ah. Ecological niche is the role of the species, so more, more importantly, they will ask for this ah, role. What do they do? Are they decomposers? Are they producers? Or are they part of the food chain, okay? Species niche is the way the species interacts with the biotic and abiotic component in the environment. Okay, not so important here, but just remember the niche is just equal to the role. So in our, let's say in, in Ipoh, that's where we stay here now, Ipoh. What is the role, uh, let's say we have doctors, we have lawyers, we have teachers, right? everybody yeah, staying in Ipoh. So Ipoh is like a big community. What is the niche of doctors? What is the role of these doctors? Doctors is to heal the sick. Huh? So their job is to heal the people who are sick. All right? What is the niche of teachers? What is their role here? People, who are, all the teachers in Ipoh, right? What do they do? They educate. They go to school and then they teach and then they carry out online lessons just like what I do. And this is their role. Okay, so that's basically what it means. Huh? So every organism in an ecosystem has its job, has its function. And that is called a niche, the niche. Okay, what do they do there? Okay, now let's go on to the biotic and abiotic components. Okay, so this one is just a basic uh, read what the ecological niche is, just I already mentioned. It describes the role. Huh? Ecological niche describes the role, right? This is the role, right? The role of the organism, right? Uh, for example, this bird, uh, Pukiko, lives in marsh areas. It feeds on small insects and grass. This is what they do. Uh, they just eat. Uh, even though they do not contribute much. Uh, maybe they are, but they, they contribute in the sense that they maybe is part of the food chain for another bigger organism. Okay, so species niche uh, encompasses the physical and environment condition it requires, okay, where it stays and interaction and so on. Okay, so there's nothing so important here. Just remember, if I ask you what is a niche, just say it's the role. Okay, now let's look at the two components in an ecosystem. I mentioned here the word biotic and abiotic, correct? Biotic and abiotic. Biotic is all the living organisms. Example, you have all the animals, all the plants, including the bacteria or the microorganisms, they are considered abiotic. Abiotic are all the things that they are not living. Okay, for example, sunlight. Sunlight is not a living thing. Water, uh, carbon dioxide composition, oxygen, uh, humidity. Okay, uh, what else? Uh? pH of the soil. Okay, so all this is non-living. So you can just read this on your own. Uh, right? So uh, I just want to cut that because I, I think sometimes my lessons drag on too, for too long. Uh, so because I delve too long in certain things. Okay, ecosystem, biotic, all right. So you have their role, right? Their niche. Some of them are producers, some are com consumers, some are, de are decomposers, okay? And then the abiotic components will be the pH value, the temperature, yes, light, topography. Topography, after we go through one by one, huh? microclimate, air humidity, all this you know, huh? humidity. Maybe this, these two words are new for you, topography and microclimate. So we will look at it afterwards, okay? So here are the main components of an ecosystem. Okay, you can see ecosystem is uh, of the lake. Let's say this is a lake. Huh? You have different different animals. So a duck is just one species. You have many, many ducks staying together. They call a population of duck. Then you have different, different uh, species. One duck is one population. Frog is another population. Water lily is another population. Then stay together, you get a community. Okay, and so on and so forth. Okay, now let's go on to the factors uh, a body factors, right? 
the other factors you know lah, you have the decomposer the producer and the uh, consumer okay now a body factors refer to the non-living factors so just look around you what are the things that are non-living okay definitely sunlight so many things right okay first of all let's look at the ph value now ph value uh, is a, a factor that 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 determines whether the organism can stay there or cannot stay there because um most of the organisms they have a uh, tolerance to a certain pH. If it's too high, too acidic, it cannot stay, right? And too low, right? Uh, sorry, too high acidic means alkaline, you, you cannot stay there. And if it's too low at uh, pH, that means it is acidic, okay? It doesn't stay. So certain animal or certain plants require different soil, acidic soil or alkaline soil, okay? So you don't have to remember all the examples of all this. It would be too much for you to remember. But uh, one example that a uh, question that I've come across uh, that you must remember is if they ask you a question, which one, uh, bacteria or fungus, which one prefer uh, what kind of environment? Okay, now this one you remember. You don't need to remember the maize and the soya bean and all that, no need. So you remember this one. If they ask you, bacteria prefers acidic or alkaline environment. Okay, what about fungus? Fungus prefer acidic or alkaline environment. Okay, you remember this one. So bacteria, they prefer a more alkaline environment. Okay, whereas fungus or fungi, they prefer a more acidic environment. They live better. Okay, that means they that is the more preferred condition, pH. Fungus, fungi, okay, more acidic. Uh, they prefer more acidic environment. And bacteria, they prefer more alkaline environment. Okay, so that's all you need to remember. Not only remember the specific uh, plants and all that for alkaline and acidic environment. Okay, but you know, you're not farmers, right? If you're farmers, uh, you need to know, uh, right? You don't need to. Now, Temperature. Now, temperature is also very important. Huh? Now, why we talk about temperature? Because you learned earlier, it's because of the enzyme. If it's too cold, all right, your enzymes do not work very well. And if it's too hot, now your enzymes will actually denature. So you talk about that, okay? Not to just say this is very biologically based on the fact. You don't say too hot cannot live, too cold cannot live. So why? Why? What is the reason that? Because the enzyme becomes denatured when the temperature rises higher than 50 degrees Celsius. And when it's very low, the, uh, let's say uh, certain the, uh, Celsius are uh, very low, you find that the enzymes do not function very well, okay? Because they become, you don't say denatured, as I mentioned earlier, enzyme is denatured only at high temperature. When low temperature, you don't say it's denatured, you will say it's inactive. Enzyme is not denatured with low temperature, okay? This is one, ex, uh, one uh, what do you call the wrong impression that students get huh? everything also denatured enzyme doesn't work means denatured okay it's only high temperature you get to denature it low temperature you say the enzyme is inactive okay now so that's why you can see certain animals uh, uh, can live in extreme temperature because they have adaptation uh. so you know about biology you need to know the adaptive characteristics like polar bears polar bears why are they able to stay in very cold climate because they have very thick fur. They prevent loss of heat. And there are also a few inches of uh, blubber. Blubber is the fat underneath the, the skin. So they are able to uh, preserve their heat, insulate their heat against all this. All right, okay? So now foxes, right? Fox uh, can live in desert where the temperature can reach up to 45 degrees Celsius. They are able to release heat fast one of them is their shape of the ears the ears all these are uh, they can release it faster because the shape of the ears uh, is one of the extensions uh, uh, larger so they're able to dissipate heat faster okay now homeotherms these are animals that can regulate their body temperature in other words we call it warm-blooded okay in lower secondary you call it warm-blooded but in higher secondary all right up uh from 415 maybe you need to know that actual term is called homeotherms uh, I think you also learn it uh, in, in, in lower forms. Uh, warm-blooded. So warm-blooded in terms of uh, class, uh, you have mammals and birds. These are the warm-blooded. The other three, uh, fish, amphibian, and reptiles, they are cold-blooded. They are called poikilotherms. Poikilotherms, they cannot control the body temperature. Not to say they're, they're, don't say that their blood is cold. Uh. They cannot control body temperature. That means if the environment is very cold, right? Their body temperature, the, the, the blood and the body temperature will follow the environment of the uh, the environment outside, yeah, get outside the body. So that means these animals are not able to be found in areas which are very cold. So like cold-blooded animals, lizards, okay, 
uh, snakes and all that. You cannot find them in the Arctic. You cannot find them in the South Pole because it will be too cold for them to survive because they cannot preserve their body heat. But polar bears, they are homeotherms. Same thing as humans. Of course, we need additional fur. Lah. We need additional, you know, the, 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 the winter clothing, lah, right? You can still say that because we have mechanisms to preserve our body heat. Homeostasis, we learned that last year, okay? So temperature in the sea and the pond is more stable, yeah, because of the specific heat capacity of water. Uh, you learn this in physics. So what it, that generally means is the water is able to conserve heat inside. Okay, so most of the, when there's a lot of climate changes and all that, you'll find that the ocean is still not so easy to change the temperature, right? Because it can preserve heat inside. For example, what I mean is, uh, if the environment becomes very cold, the water will still be a little bit warmer, okay? And if the environment becomes very warm, the, the water temperature will still be a little bit cooler. So you see, it's able to conserve heat. So they call it the specific heat capacity called latent heat nah, is, uh, is that, right? So you, it helps to preserve the heat. So that will be something to physics that tie into biology here. Lah, okay. So most of the animals, right, in the aquatic environments, ah, uh, they are able to 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 collect to survive, uh, to what they call that, uh, to um survive the certain fluxes in the changes in temperature because the ocean nah, can can sort of like preserve heat. Okay. So light intensity, you know that this is something not foreign to you. You need light to uh, produce food for green plants. So there's some most of the plants that are green, that have chlorophyll, they will stay very well, they will live very well in high light intensities. That means something that is bright. They prefer bright areas, bright, uh, uh, bright uh, conditions. Okay. So in uh, tall in, in rainforests, when you have a Malaysia, you have a tropical rainforest, you have very tall trees. Okay, and trees that are very tall, they will tend to have a lot of leaves and they will cover, they form the canopy, all right, the top the top side of the, the, the leaves. And then at the bottom here, you have low light intensity. So in the forest, when you go into the forest, you find it's very cooling because of all the canopy. They block out the sunlight, right? At the bottom there, it's always sometimes wet and humid, right? You have a lot of decomposition rate is very high. Humidity rate is very high. So you find that uh, those little, little plants and vines there, you will have less sunlight. So that's also for the same reason why you evolve epiphytes, plants that live on top of trees. Okay, the reason is because they want to prefer, they want to try to get more sunlight. So that's why the evolution of epiphytes uh, come about. Okay. Now coniferous forests, these are forests which are not uh, quite common in Malaysia. These are for temperate countries, countries which uh, experience four types of season. Okay, you have autumn, you have winter, and so on. This, uh, okay, these are the trees. Uh, you look at this one. These are the coniferous forests. Okay, these are conifers. And they all have cone, you see. The most, the, the, the specific, uh, what you call the characteristic of these coniferous plants is they have cones. And this is the seeds. The seeds are inside there. They don't have flowers, but they have this cone. Okay, they are called gymnosperms. Okay, now let's look at this. is a pine tree. Right, I'm sure you see that in Malaysia as well, the conifers, they are gymnosperm, they produce seeds, but the seeds are inside the cone here, they don't have flowers. Okay, they are called conifers. So let's look at this. Huh? Conifers, they are green, right? So they also need the light, they can produce uh, food, right? They are producers as well. Mm. So soil, right? They live in, uh, for these animals uh, that are in the soil, they will prefer to have less light intensity. They prefer dark environment. So animals. Little little ants, scorpion. What they find them? You, know, you find many of them hiding under the rock. It's because under the rock, right? You have another kind of climate on its own. It's cooler. It's wetter, right? And then uh, it has got uh, less sunlight, right? So it is less light intensity. But for plants, always remember, green plants they always want a lot of light. So whenever a uh, 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 area which is brightly lit, uh, you have see you will always have higher population of plants. Okay, compared a green plant, talking about green plants, uh, compared to an area which is um, mostly shadowed, more shadow there, you find the population will be less compared to that. Okay, humidity, it, uh, amount of water vapor. Okay, so uh, depends on where you are. So in tropical rainforests, all right, the ecosystem here, the humidity is quite high because it rains quite often. Okay, and other temperate countries, 
uh, it's quite dry the environment. So it's the amount of water vapor in the air. So we're talking about in the air, not on the ocean, and not that's not humidity. Humidity is talking about the water in the vapor form, okay, in the gaseous state. So in uh, deserts, you have very low humidity, okay, because the the light intensity is high and it's very warm, so the water gets evaporated, right, and it goes up into the uh, into the upper layers of the atmosphere. So Humidity of air affects the rate of transpiration. Yes, okay. That one you learned it earlier. The higher the, uh, the higher the humidity, the lower the rate of transpiration. Okay, because it's not easy for the water to evaporate out from the stomach. Okay, and uh, next one. Yeah, okay. Humidity is high, then the rate of water loss is low. When the humidity is, uh, then the the water will stay much more in the plant. Okay, so how to overcome this? Uh, let's look at certain plants which have adaptation for living in dry areas. So these plants are called zero fight. You've learned it in your chapter seven. Zero fights are those plants who are able to live in dry conditions where you have less of black water. So cactus, cacti is a plural. Cactus is actually singular. So when you talk about English, uh, cactus is singular. When you want to say, you don't say cactuses. Okay, there's no such thing called cactuses. It's called cacti. They have succulent. Succulent means inside there is like very spongy and it soaks up a lot of water. So it's thick. All right. Succulent means it's very juicy. So succulent, all right. The same idea is to talk about juicy lah. A lot of water inside there. Okay. The another adaptation, the leaves are modified into thorns. So they don't have much leaves. In fact, they don't have leaves. They have stem and they have thorns because you do not want them to uh, evaporate the water evaporate through the stomach. Okay, so they can conserve water. Lah. And for animals, yeah, animals which are in the desert, they have camels, they are specifically modified to what? To live in areas which are very hot and very dry because what? They have what? They have these humps, uh, H-U-M-P, humps. So I have an interesting question, uh, some, number, uh, some question some time ago, lah, we asked it, what is inside the hump there? Uh, do you have, is it a water tank? Right, maybe some kid asked me, ask, okay, ask, is it a water tank? Actually, a lot of eye people get the idea that it's like a water tank. You store water inside that. All right. It's not actually water. What they have it is fat. Fat is stored inside. And then when they want of uh, how do they get water then? Fat is metabolized. So when fat is broken down, it's oxidized, they will produce water instead. Okay, so that is through the process of respiration. Ah. When you break down any food, ah, you will get water, you will also get carbon dioxide. So there is the water for you. So that hump is not water tank, okay? So don't get the wrong impression. Huh? I hope that settles everything, right? And in order to, uh, for insects, they will have waxy body surface, a cuticle there, right? The, the, the surface, the chitin is the surface. Uh, chitin is the substance that gives it uh, protection. Then you have waxy surface, okay? So uh, there's nothing much here. Now let's look at topography. What does it mean by topography? Topography in BM, uh, you've learned in geography from tree, it's called bentok buka bumi. Yeah, that means you're talking about whether it's mountain or the valley or whether it's low area tanah pama or tanah tinggi. So that is talking about the shape of the earth surface, the hills and the valleys and so on. Okay, so altitude, there are three things we talk about in, in terms of topography. Altitude, height, that means height. If your altitude, high altitude means it's high area, okay, high uh, like a mountain, like in a mountain. You have low atmospheric pressure, you have lower oxygen, Okay, and the humidity is low. So in higher mount areas, like in the talk about Everest mountain, uh, Mount Everest, the oxygen content is very low. That's why the climbers have to bring up their oxygen tank when they climb Everest mountain. Okay, uh, and the atmospheric pressure is also quite low. Okay, so different in in when you compare to on the on the plains, that means lower ground, and uh, compare the plants. The vegetation compared to the ones in the mountains, very high mountain, you find they're different. They're very different. Okay. For plants which are on the lower grounds, you find it's more lush. That means more plants, more leaves, more species, and all that. When you go up to higher, as the higher you climb up the mountain, you find the vegetation, the size decreases. Okay. And also it is smaller. I mean, the you don't have uh, the number of species are uh, very uh, become less. They don't have so many types of vegetation there. Okay. So pine trees, which grow at higher altitudes, they are smaller in size compared to the Maranti trees, which are in the rainforest. So the size, because of the environment, you have lack of this, lack of that. So they do not grow that much, lah, grow that well. The gradient, 
gradient talk about the steepness how steep is the slope so if you see a slope that's very steep like you can see it's very sharp all right this is called steep slope and this is a not so steep slope you see the gradient the gradient is less okay so if the higher the steep the deeper the slope is you are it's more prone to soil erosion so when the rain comes down all right it's more easy for the mountain to uh, the, the soil to come down and, and erode that means you wash away the soil so you have thinner and uh veg i mean the, the the mountain can be eroded off easier and the soil will be thinner so it's not so suitable for plants to stay lah. okay but if you have lower and flatter let low lying areas all right uh like my i mean this is this mountain right you have less soil erosion so probably you have more plants able to stay there okay so now next one uh if you have very flat low lying areas that always have a lot of water poor drainage means the root the water is very damp right i mean the, the soil is very wet a lot of, so you find that also not many uh, any, uh, plants are able to stay there it's called water locked soil okay not many are able to have that adaptation the roots may may die all right little oxygen okay aspect aspect is referring to the direction so you have a mountain here let's say uh, this diagram is very good okay so here we look here the aspect so this side receives a lot of wind a lot of uh, moist air because come from the sea you see right so this side you can see the vegetation here is more lush lush means more fan rong that means more okay more plants compared to the other side which you will have dry air right maybe this side is a uh, facing not facing the, the the sea but facing the other side you will have less so the slope that receives more sunlight let's say the one slope one side of the mountain receives more sunlight you will have more your know, denser vegeta vege vegetation more plants there okay and in the northern hemisphere that means countries are uh, uh, facing let's say mongo uh, china is in the normal hemisphere those south facing slope of the mountain that faces the south side will get more sunlight okay and therefore you have more plants staying there so how the mountain faces is also important. Where it faces, does it get more sunlight or does it get less sunlight? Okay, does it get the wind? Does it get the whatever, the, the water, okay, the humidity? So that's the called aspect, which side it faces. Okay, microclimate. Microclimate is the little climate. So it means like small little climate in a small area. Okay, I give a very simple example, just like I mentioned earlier. If you are at the beach, right, you go to the beach, there you have the climate of the beach there, right? You have a lot of sunlight and so on. You have the animals staying in the water and so on. And also on the beach, you'll get these crabs and all that, right? That burrow into the sand. Now, if you were to go to a place where there's rocks, you pick up a rock and see. Normally, when you pick up a rock, you will see some little, little creatures there, all right? Little, little ants, all right? Maybe some worms and all that. Now, when you pick up a rock, that place under the rock is a little microclimate on its own because it's less exposed to sunlight. It is cooler and also it will be wetter. So that is a microclimate. So microclimate refers to, let's say, um, the microclimate and under the rock or the microclimate in the cave. Uh, so that is the different little, little climates that you exist in the whole uh, ecosystem, right? Little, little places like uh, under under the tree, uh, under the tree maybe when there's a lot of root, uh, root, root system there, uh, you have a microclimate on its own under the rock or in the cave there, right? So this involves the quantity of rain, humidity, the wetness, the lights, okay, temperature, okay. So example, in the soil here, there's a little microclimate because it's wet, right? And then under a tree, below a tree or a large rock, okay, in the burrow, right, a rabbit that burrows into the ground or in a cave. So these are small little, little climates on its own, call it microclimate, all right, okay. So that I've already explained uh, the aspects of, aspects of what, abiotic component, Okay, abiotic factors. These are the factors which affect how much of the uh, many, what type of animal can stay there, and also the population distribution, whether they stay here more or they go to another place. So this is called the distribution, right? So this abiotic factors. All right, these are the abiotic factors. Now we go on to a little bit before we. This is a. I already mentioned earlier in my lesson earlier actually the type of nutrition. Ah, there are two types. Okay, my if you haven't seen this uh, explanation. Uh, I've already mentioned a little bit in my previous when I talk about microorganisms. So it's the type of nutrition. Basically, all the animals are divided into two types of having two types of nutrition only. One is autotrophic, the other one is heterotrophic. Okay, heterotrophic. Auto, as you know, is automatic uh, by itself. It can carry out things by itself. Okay, and hetero means other. 
okay other or different right hetero so first of all i want you to see the word the usage of the word autotroph and autotrophic so sometimes student teachers are students ask me so can i use the word autotroph when do i use the word autotroph when do i use the word autotrophic okay so here i want to set aside uh set your uh, uh you know your ambiguity uh, uh i want to clear the air lah. so when you talk about the organism itself you can just word use the word autotroph that means you're talking about the organism Talking about, let's say, uh, green plants are autotrophs. Ah, that's correct. You're talking about the noun. The noun is the thing itself. So uh, this plant is an autotroph. Or this bacteria is an autotroph. Okay, full stop, enough, All right? You can just say autotroph, full stop. This is talking about a noun. But when you want to talk, use the word autotrophic. Okay, autotrophic is adjective. Adjective doesn't stand on its own usually, All right? You need to have another noun. So it's an autotrophic organism. Okay, so autotrophic what? Autotrophic animal, the animal that can carry out autotrophic, uh, this kind of nutrition uh, is called autotrophic organism. So when you say autotrophic, you say autotrophic organism. When you say autotroph, this is an autotroph. No need to say organism because autotroph is already the organism. Okay, so that's how you say it. So when you say heterotrophic, usually you say organism. On its way, okay. Heterotroph also can. So under autotrophic, okay, autotrophic, you have two types. What kind of energy do they use to make their own food? That is autotrophic. Ah, huh? synthesize. They synthesize their own food. That's why auto, ma. Auto means 自动. They do their own self. Chemo. One of it. Uh, one type is they are using the key the chemical energy from conversion of one substance into another substance. Okay, these are done by only a very specific few types of bacteria like uh, sulfur bacteria, all right? And also the way we have learned in our last lesson, the nitrogen-fixing bacteria in your nitrogen cycle, okay? Uh, this rhizobium, azotobacter, nostoc, anabena, they are able to convert this substance, all right, that contains ammonia, right, into ammonium. And from that, the energy is they get their food from there, okay? So autotrophic is a nutrition, the type of nutrition in which organisms synthesize their own food by using simple inorganic substances. And also the energy comes not from sunlight. Okay. Uh, sorry, uh, not from sun. Uh, chemo is not from sunlight. Photo is from sunlight. So auto means make their own food. But what kind of energy? Depending on whether it's sunlight. This is from light. All right. This one is from chemical energy. So both also autotrophic. So all green plants are uh, phototrophic. Okay. They are photosynthetic. Now, next one, uh, okay, I think this one you can read on your own, uh, right? You can, uh, you can uh, play back the video and you can read all these additional facts by your own. Uh. Okay, now, heterotrophic. Heterotrophic means other. They cannot make food by themselves. They have to rely on other organisms to get their food, okay? The food is already made by another organism in the organic matter. That means carbohydrate. We can't make carbohydrate. We have to eat it from our, our food. That's why we eat rice. Rice has carbohydrate. We can't uh make carbohydrate by ourselves okay so they feed on complex organic matter meaning protein carbohydrate or lipid they can't do it on themselves they can't make it so example like three types yeah three types huh? heterotrophic has got three types holozoic okay i switch on sorry i switch on the uh my my uh, charger first huh? okay all right holozoic holozoic are organisms which actually ingest the food they eat the food into the body and they digest it inside. They break it down. They break down to make to make the uh, to get the organism uh, to get the substances that they need to make me maybe make new cells. Okay, maybe to uh, get your glucose for energy and so on. Uh. So we are holozoic. Okay, we feed on complex organic matter. That means your protein already made by something else by the plants. The protein made by the animal uh, or or carbohydrate made by the uh, in the meat or in the in the fish or in the uh, plants, we eat that, okay? So many, many types of organisms are under holozoic. Okay, next, saprophytic. Saprophytic are those organisms that feed on dead. Uh, look at this word, dead. Uh, dead uh. So they, they they sort of like uh, survive on dead matter. So things are already dead, they're decomposing. So why do they decompose? Because they make them decompose. These saprophytic organisms are converting the protein, the uh, lipid, the carbohydrate in the dead body, right? Because our body has all that, right? You, you, it, it composes, decomposes it into 
uh, carbon dioxide, water, and so on, right? And they feed on that, right? They they will take in the nutrients from there, from the conversion, okay, from the breaking down. And then parasitic, they will suck the nutrients directly from the organism, either by uh, attaching to the body on the outside or whether they are inside the body. So the organism is called a host, right? And this parasite, they will obtain it from the, uh, the host. So they take from another living organism, okay? Worms, all the worms that are inside the body, not the worms outside, not our earthworm. Huh? Earthworm is not parasitic, all right? Earthworm is allozoic because they eat. They eat their small little debris out in, in the soil. But the worms that are inside our body, okay, all these uh, tapeworms, ringworms, okay, they are they suck nutrients from our intestines. Raphelsia is a plant which is parasitic, okay? Now, so let's look at the different types here, just more explanation. Okay, chemosynthesis. So autotrophic, there are two types. Chemo, chemo autotroph. Example would be the nitrosomonas also, right? Nitrosomonas, nitrobacter. They convert nitrosomonas, remember? Nitrite to nitrate. Nitrobacter, sorry, uh, ammonium to nitrite is nitrosomonas. Okay, nitrobacter converts nitrite to nitrate. So you're going to start to memorize it already. Okay, ammonia to uh, nitrite is nitrosomonas. Then uh, nitrite to nitrate is nitrobacter. Okay, another type is the sulfur bacteria, and these are the ones that can live in very extreme temperatures. Okay, remember you learned that in archaea bacteria and all that. Okay, now next one is photosynthesis. I'm sure you very commonly you know this. Huh? These are all examples which have got green. Uh, we have this chlorophyll. That's all. All right. Then heterotrophic, just as I mentioned earlier, they cannot synthesize their own food, so they are they must get it from other organisms. There are three types, holozoic, okay, so a human being, uh, this chameleon, even alligator, whatever, Venus flytrap. Venus flytrap got two, ah. Venus flytrap, don't forget, they're also green. So they are autotrophic. They are also happen to have holo holozoic. They also eat the insects, okay? So these are the examples, right? Herbivores, all this, they ingest their food. They eat it. Then, of course, they digest it, and then they produce the uh, feces, and they throw out the waste, Okay. Saprophytism, ah, dead, right? Remember here, dead organic matter. So, uh, mushrooms, fungus, a lot of fungus, and also uh, bacteria called saprophytic. So, bacteria you cannot just say bacteria because bacteria there are many types. Some are saprophytic, some are autotrophic. So, when you say about the bacteria that can decompose a uh, dead organic matter, you must say saprophytic bacteria. Okay, because not all bacteria are decomposers only the saprophytic type, okay? That's why you see this word, saprophytic bacteria. All right, mole, all right, or the main palmea, yeah, the one that grow under the mole, on the bread, okay? Okay, and saprophytic bacteria. Okay, parasitism, all right, this is something very similar. Uh, we are very commonly, we know, like, especially our mosquito, right? We always get bitten by mosquito. So they are parasites, but they are ectoparasites because they don't stay inside us. They're on the skin. Okay, of course, they fly in from time to time, but they don't stick to our skin. If, uh, uh, some of them, they stick to our skin, like ticks, all right? Ticks are uh, this uh, kutu, uh, we call it kutu, right? Kutu, you know, uh, some people have kutu on their hair, okay? So uh, the dogs will have kutu on their body, so they are called a kutu. Mites, ticks, and so flea, uh, another word is flea. Flea and ticks are slightly different, uh, they, are, they are different, different species, okay? Raphelsia, they are uh, ectoparasitic, they don't, they, they, they stay on the outside. Okay, so these are the organisms which are ectoparasite and uh, so endo, endo are the ones that, uh, what, they live inside. Ascaris are the worms, tapeworms and all that, roundworm, tapeworms, okay. Uh, tania, those that suck nutrient from our intestine. So we lose nutrient to them, right? So if you have worms, try to get rid of them, go, okay, go to the pharmacies, uh, you can buy the medicine and you actually flush it out, all right? You kill them and then actually they come out through the feces, then... Better lah, right? You do not, why Why you want to share your nutrients with them, right? You are losing nutrient, okay? Even though it's enough for you, but you're actually not getting 100% of nutrient lah. You're taking some of it. Okay, so, have any questions here so far? I can tackle them, all right? Okay. Um, at the moment, I don't have any, all right? So, this is what I want to tell you, all right, in today's lesson. Just a basic understanding of the, what is ecosystem, what is in the ecosystem, what are the components in the ecosystem? The biotic, which uh, all this, lah, when you learn about all these species, population, community, what's the difference in all this? 
you get confused. I get a lot of students tell me they're confused. They cannot understand. Okay. And then you talk about the abiotic, right? Abiotic components. How do they in, it, uh, affect the distribution of the biotic component? Okay. And also lastly, a little bit on the nutrition because we're going to this, the next lesson about the different types of uh, the relationship. Huh? We're going to the next lesson about the relationship. And one of the relationship is the food, the food chain. Uh, the next one will be about food chain. Okay, so this is what I need to show you. I the textbook, what I've explained from my notes here. Okay, they also encompass a textbook. So again, your textbook is your main reference. Okay, any anything additional would be good for you. Okay, so you please read your textbook. I always suggest, I always uh, encourage you to have your textbook as your uh, main reference rather than have so many uh, reference books from the outside. So this is at least the minimum what you need to know. All right. Okay. So I've taken up enough of your time, I hope. All right. So uh, I will see you in the next lesson. Okay. It might be uh, next Saturday or it could be some sometime another time. Okay. I will, it will, I will see the situation. All right. Okay. So I will end broadcast now and thanks for joining my class. Okay. So hopefully you can share this video. I would like, I don't mind that more students are learning. Okay. I, they don't have to be students in my school. So I don't mind if you learn. Right. I think learning is free. Right, I feel really believe learning is free. Okay, I'll see you next lesson. Right, thank you girls for joining and also other students outside there. Yeah, welcome. Thank you girls. I'll see you on class next week. Yeah, huh? right, bye bye.